Hi there, my name's Andy Young and I'm one of the automotive lecturers down at Unitech in Auckland, New Zealand. And today, we've got a problem. Today wasn't going to be a filming day. This is Ben's ute. Ben's my lad. And it went for a waff. And it failed. And it failed because of the brakes. And it turns out there's a big problem with the left-hand rear brake. When it's on the brake machine, very, very little output compared to the right hand side. Here my mate. There's also a bit of an issue with the front left hand brake as well. Uh, that's down on efficiency too. So we're going to take a look at the rear brake first and see what's going on. There's obviously something pretty serious. Here we go. Okay, so we've now got to undo the two screws that retain the drum. Then we can get the drum off and see what's really going on inside. Golly. I reckon it's going to be pretty bad actually. Lots of strange noises from this corner of the car. Golly, nearly there. Okay. Door, we're going to have to use a puller. Let's get a bolt for in there, look. Shame it's not got two, actually. I was expecting springs to have come off, carnage on the brake shoes, doesn't look too bad. Not yet, anyway. So a bit more investigation required, I think. We'll start pulling a few more bits off. Okay, so a quick close-up before we start pulling it apart. It's always useful to take pictures and a bit of video before you go any further, just so you can relate back to it. It looks to me like everything, and I mean everything, is in place. Been making some pretty strange noises at this corner of the ute uh, over the last year, but there's just no telltale signs. There's no metal shards. There's no <clears throat> undue wear. It's all sort of pretty, pretty much as it should be. But anyway, we'll start to take some of the shoes off. Um, <clears throat> I have a sneaky suspicion that the wheel, one of the, that the wheel cylinder itself, has seized up, but this brake is massively underperforming. In actual fact it's doing really very little compared to the other side on the same axle. 
Now when you get an imbalance, they call that, of braking force, uh, anything more than 20% is a warrant fail. And this was about 78% imbalance, which indicates a very, very serious fault on this particular brake. That wouldn't uh, account for the fact that the handbrake is also way down on that corner. And the handbrake mechanism also applies to the same brake shoes. <clears throat> so even if the wheel cylinder is seized up, that would account for the service brake fault, but it wouldn't account for the handbrake fault. Maybe it's just bad adjustment on the handbrake. Don't know. We need to pull it apart more and have a look. that one. It's part of the handbrake mechanism, or the auto adjuster actually, that one. Come back. Lots of bits. Lots and lots of bits. Okay, on handbrake cable. There we go. Right, other side. To the side, here we go. Hmm, wheel cylinder feels C solid. I think. We may have found the problem. So those are all the, uh, the the brake shoes taken off and all the clips and springs and God, there's all sorts of stuff there. And I'm going to go online to make sure that I've got a diagram so I can double check that everything was where it should be because something's been making a nasty noise in here. Okay, so we've got the wheel cylinder now exposed. It looks pretty old. I thought we'd change these, but maybe not because we've had the Ute about three years. Uh, it looks to me like the uh, both of the two pistons are actually seized in on the wheel cylinder and that would explain why this brake's basically doing nothing when we apply the brake pedal. Now I think the next step is to take the wheel cylinder off and to do that you'll see we've got a brake pipe to remove and we've got two mounting bolts here as well so we'll get all that cracked off and get the wheel cylinder on the bench and we'll give it an inspection and see what's going on. So as you can see, we've got all the various brake pipes up here. This is a load sensing proportioning valve. And uh, the more weight we put in the back of the ute, the lower or more compressed the rear suspension gets. And that senses the angle of the chassis. And it, uh, the lower the chassis gets, comes down, the more brake pressure is applied through to the rear brakes. This is the, uh, the flexi pipe. We need to clamp that off before we can remove the wheel cylinder, otherwise we're going to be draining all the brake fluid out of the brake system and it's going to be a nightmare to bleed up later on. But if we clamp the flexi then we're not going to lose any fluid prior to this clamp. Uh, all that can drain out is what's actually in these pipes uh, along the axle. Right, now before we can undo the two mounting bolts we need to crack off this bolt here. Now this is the union for the actual brake pipe itself. Now it can be quite hard to get undone. <clears throat> oh, there we go. 
Excellent. We're going to do that. Dum -de -dum -de -dum -dum. And of course, we're dealing with brake fluid, so make sure you're wearing gloves now, obviously, and uh, some eye protection. That's really important. You really, really don't want to be getting brake fluid in your eyes. I can speak with experience. It's not nice at all. Now the fact this has come undone relatively easily would lead me to believe that we have actually changed when we brought the ute. I know we fitted rear shoes, I just cannot remember for the life of me whether we changed the wheel cylinders. It just seems very strange why this wheel cylinder is seized up. It's really, three years isn't a very long period of time, you'd expect them to last a lot longer than that. Okay, that's definitely out. One. Now, if I've put these on, they'll have me copper paste on these bolts. Doesn't feel like it. No, but I'm dry, so it seems very likely that these wheel cylinders, I haven't changed them in the past. Which would mean why they've seized up. Right. Pretty tight. Pretty tight. Come on, Ford. I've got to say, I've got to take the bleeding block as well. Really? So we'll just get that out of the way. Jeez. Fantastic. Okay. Bolts back in again there. I'm just putting the bolts back in so that it's going to stabilise the uh, cylinder, hold it in place. Just while I crack off that bleed nipple. Really weird, you've got to take the bleed nipple off. Bleed nipple wheel cylinder out, but hey, that's the way it is. Right. Yes, success. Okay, so uh, we we'll get rid of those for a second. Uh, so one wheel cylinder. This is uh, the passenger side rear of uh, that Ford Courier Ute. So we need to now make sure there's not fluid in there and we can take it apart see what kind of condition those pistons are in. Um, I had a sneaky suspicion, I was under the impression that we'd replace these wheel cylinders when we did the brake overhaul on the vehicle. Pretty sure we didn't because the retaining bolts that hold the wheel cylinders, the backing plate, didn't have any copper slip, no, copper paste as per New Zealand terms. Now, um, if it didn't have any copper paste, it probably wasn't me that fitted this. Um, so we're going to pull it apart and we'll see really just how badly seized those pistons are. Chances are we're going to need to go buy a new one, or probably two, do both sides at the same time, just to be on the safe side, because they're not expensive. Okay, let's get it pulled apart. Right, so first of all, dust seals off. Too hard. There we go. See the pistons right down the bottom there. Look, shouldn't be like that. Oh, here we go. Okay, so we've got a bit of corrosion just inside there. Look, inside the cylinder itself. Now, inside here, we've got a piston at this end, piston at this end, and then a very light spring between the two. 
and on each of those two pistons will be an L-type seal. Um, so if it's seized up, we should really be able to just give one of them a tap to push the other one through and then tap the other one back out. So let's do that. Stick it in the vise and we'll give it a go. Now I'm going to clamp it around here. I don't want to put any, any pressure on the actual cylinder itself. Otherwise that in itself might prevent them from, uh, from coming out. Might distort the cylinder. Baby vise. Okay. There's still more to come out. We've just got the piston so far. Obviously this is in a few pieces. <laughs> okay. So there was one of the seals. Oh, it's old school. Okay, so yeah, I've not seen this one before. This is uh, a cup seal. It's not an L-type seal, it's just a cup seal. And all that does is it sits on the back of the piston like that and the spring, which is somewhere in the workshop, uh, sits on the back of the seal there between the two pistons and holds the seal against the piston. Basically that's what it does. Its main job is to hold the seal in position. This is a really old school style wheel cylinder. They're not normally like this anymore. They normally have a hole in the middle of the seal and they have a little button on the end of the piston and you actually fit the seal onto the end of the piston and it's posit positively fitted. Sure, there is still a light spring, but the spring's job isn't to hold this in place. Right, let's have a look and see if we can get, get the other seal out because I can't use a punch in there at the moment. This is obviously scrap, we're going to need to get a new one, but uh, not really ideal. Okay, so there's the other seal. And that's the other piston in there. So we'll just tap that piston out and then we'll go hunting for the spring. So you can see, uh, and you could tell by the video actually, the, the piston was pretty seized in the bore, took quite a lot of effort to move it, hence the problem uh, of the efficiency on that brake. These pistons are not being pushed out by hydraulic pressure, and we're not getting the brake shoes being pushed against the drum. Essentially that brake was doing nothing, it was ineffective. None of this, however, affects why the handbrake was also down on efficiency. Um, Although that's not a warrant fail, it did work a little bit, but not a lot. Uh, we still want to be looking at that and see if we can solve that problem at the same time. So I'm going to need to go and find a spring, and then we can line all the bits up and you can see how this thing works. And I can go off and try and find a new one. Now if you look inside, oh look at that, look inside the bore of this wheel cylinder, you're going to see all the corrosion in there. And that's why the piston was, oh, the pistons were sticking so badly. Very, very rusty. In fact, we've even got we've even got a ridge down there. Look at all the crap and guns that's in there. So I really definitely expired, and we'll have to get two. We'll do the other side at the same time. Right, found the spring. So just to quickly show you how this all goes together, obviously bleed nipple sticks in there, and <clears throat> we have the two pistons, and obviously. This is the outside of the piston, that's what makes contact with the brake shoe. They sit like that. Then we have, let's do it down here, look, they sit like that in there. Then we've got this cup seal, that sits on the end of the pistons in that orientation, so that as the pressure builds in the chamber between these two seals, it forces, it forces these these seals outwards against the cylinder wall and that's what creates the seal. Now this spring sits between between them like that and it's that spring's job, it has two jobs one is to keep this seal against the piston in the, in the vertical orientation so it can't 
you know, drop down and then a fluid would leak out. But it's also, it has a job of maintaining zero clearance between the ends of the pistons and the brake shoes themselves. We don't want any air gaps between the pistons and the brake shoes because if we did, when you press the brake pedal, you're going to have no resistance until these move out and touch the, touch the brake shoes, which means we're going to end up with a low pedal. So on this particular style of wheel cylinder, the wheel cylinders with a cup type seal, um, that spring has two jobs. One is to keep the pistons in contact with the brake shoes, and the other is to make sure that the seals, the cup seals, stay uh, vertical uh, against the pistons themselves. Um, a different role um, on the other kind of wheel cylinders, the ones that have got the L-type seals. In the L-type seal wheel cylinders, the spring is only there to prevent the gap between the pistons and the brake shoes. It has nothing to do with holding the seals in place. Okay, so work stops. I'm going to have to go and find some new wheel cylinders and then I've got to come back, fit them, bleed up the brakes, and then do a test. Right, here we go. Um, new parts. New wheel cylinders come into stock. Still waiting on the uh, caliper seal kits. They're going to be here hopefully later on this afternoon. So I've got a few minutes free. Well, a couple of hours free actually this afternoon. So let's install the new wheel cylinder. Uh, refit all the brake shoes and stuff for the passenger side rear. Uh, I'm not going to worry about showing you how to bleed it up. There's plenty of videos that I've already done showing you how to bleed up brakes. Uh, it's not hard. Um, but you can see on here that the, the pistons are really nice and free and everything's as it should be. I'm not going to pull this apart and show you the internals. Um, it's basically just new stuff compared to the old stuff you've already seen. Uh, and of course you get a nice new bleed nipple with this one as well. Okay, so we're going to refit this back onto the backing plate for the drum brake. And we're going to use thread lock on these two bolts because we don't want this wheel cylinder coming loose. Um, yeah, definitely thread lock, I would say, on this particular vehicle with it being a road going vehicle. If it was an off road only vehicle, I'd be using copper paste because of all the water, things tend to seize up anyway. Right, to the vehicle. Now, first job is to remove the, uh, the bleed nipple because that gets pretty much in the way of refitting the brake pipe. And we're going to put the brake pipe, just start the threads on that first before we bolt the whole thing into place. It's a lot easier to jiggle it around when it's loose and to get those threads started. He says, complete. There we go. A couple of turns on the old spannery. Those threads are good now, nice and well started. <clears throat> Bit of thread lock, if Ben's left me any. Have we got any thread lock? Come on, Ben. Looks like you're buying the next tube. Okay, we've run out of thread lock. No thread lock on this one. Look, it's Ben's truck. Okay. So normally I'd be putting thread lock on there. Not today. Right. <coughs> Bolt number one. And bolt number two. Now these are an M8 bolt, so <coughs> if you want to talk, so you'll be looking around about 20 newton meters. Right, so now that's all bolted into place, making sure it's nicely sat, yeah, it's in contact, it's good. We can now tighten up the brake pipe completely. And if you want to, you can put a bit of copper paste on the brake pipe union. That just helps next time around to get it undone properly without stripping it or rounding the bolt off, usually that's what happens.
so and lastly bleed nipple back in again and again the bleed nipple wants to have a bit of copper paste on there because they can seize in there we go I'm going to take the cap off but I am going to tighten it up just for now I don't want any moisture in there keep it nice and closed <clears throat> okay so the next step is now to refit those brake shoes and uh, the array of various springs and bits and pieces and retaining clips back in onto the backing plate as well. Hopefully I can remember how it all goes. Um, <clears throat> these little contact pads here, they're going to get some copper paste put on because that's where the brake shoes make contact with the backing plate and they need to be able to flow across the backing plate pretty freely. So I'll just add that before we put the shoes back on. Now you only want a thin smear on these, and yeah, I could have wire brushed them, I suppose, first. <clears throat> it is your own truck, you tend not to do things that way. Right. Okay. Time for lots of bits. This is not going to go well, I can tell. Okay, first job then is handbrake cable back on. The easiest thing to do. I know what we need. We need some long nose pliers. Come on, Tang, we can do this. Right, first job then is to get that spring up the cable. There we go. Hold that. Bit of a trick. Post that through there to there, like that. Cool. One handbrake back on. Now, with these shoes, handbrake cable, should I say, we've got a contact point here as well. So that really should have copper paste on it. So we'll just drop that down. And we'll just stick a bit on there as well. You don't want lots because there'll be a chance that it's going to get on the drum and the brake shoes and that kind of stuff uh, which is obviously really bad for brakes but <clears throat> a little bit of lubrication is always a good thing right let's try again so an array of bits and pretty confident that, that goes on there. So I'll just slide that down there like that. There we go. Okay, I think it's time to put the retaining spring back in. And then that way, <coughs> we don't have to hold it. Well, we're doing all the springs and stuff. Somewhere. Somewhere as a hole. There we go. Right. Okay. It's sort of a three hand job, is this? Let's see how we get up. I think. Right. Okay, bull nose pliers are great for this. You can just get hold of the washer. Oh, crap. There it goes. Bull nose pliers are usually great for this. Let's put that back on there. Try it again. Okay. Right. Turn it 180, sorry, 90 degrees, and that's on. going to help to hold it in position for us. Pretty much all over the place. Now let's get this top spring put on. Now, if I remember rightly, that goes there like that. And then this one goes in there. 
and then just hooks over here. Now these are really strong, so there we go. That's that one. Right, it's looking a bit better. Okay. What else have we got? Well, got this army thing going on. Now that goes in there. Golly, how does it go? <clears throat> Leave that for now. Adjuster. Let's do the adjuster. All right. So we've got some threads in there. Look, they should have a bit of copper paste on them. I'll stick that on there. And then we'll wind that back in again. Right. And then on this end, this is just a spinny thing, but again, it should have some copper paste on it. So I'll do that. Stick that on there. Cool. Okay, that's that bit done. Now, pretty sure that went that way around. Right. Time for the easier of the two shoes. That goes on there. That sits there. God, I hate these brakes. Right. And we need the other big spring at the top. Or should we clip it in first? Oh, I can see what I've forgotten already. Okay, cool. Right, let's stick that through there. So I'm going to put the other, the other brake shoe retaining pin in now. This is always the problem when you're doing brakes. When you're doing brakes a few days after you strip them down, because you easily forget where stuff goes. And it's not your fault, you know. You're only human. few hands free now. Okay, let's get that top spring in, that's going to hold that together. Okay. And again. Okay, so we've missed a, missed a part here. We'll sort that out in a second. We get in there slowly. Okay, let's stick that in there now. I'm pretty sure of that. That sits on there like that. Yeah, it makes sense. Around there's going to be too high. So, yep, okay. So, <clears throat> this is the auto adjustment arm. And there's an adjuster down the bottom, which I've now dropped on the floor with bits all over the place. It's not my day today. Okay. Right, so we've got this. <clears throat> we've got this adjuster down the bottom. And whenever the, the shoes get pushed outwards, if there's enough movement, it'll, it, this arm goes out with the shoe and it clicks this adjuster around one more notch. And that's how it self adjusts. So as the linings of the shoe wear down, this adjuster uh, essentially um, screws out like that. So it must go that way around. There we are. Okay, so as it's rotated down, it, the distance between these two bits here, where the, the base of each shoe fits, basically increases as that rotates. And that takes up any adjustment uh, 
to compensate for the wear on these shoes. But, like a Muppet, I've forgotten to put that in there like that. And there must be, there's another spring that goes from here up to here, so we'll stick that on as well. So, I'm going to have to remove this clip again. This is where it could all go tragically wrong. Where you run out of fingers. Right, so we'll stick that in there. Okay, a spring. And the little clip at the end. Right. Hurrah! First time. Excellent. There's a big spring that has to go across. Well, I think that goes on there like that. And then this one. Yeah, that's the base spring down there. Okay. Holy moly. Right, we'll stick that on <clears throat> later. Let's get the base spring in first, and that has to go around the back, otherwise it's going to get in the way of everything. So this is the base spring. This is the one that connects the two shoes together down the bottom. Holds everything together, so... You'll find doing drum breaks when there's so much going on like there is in this one, and it can be such a pain in the ass. Nah, it's not having it. So I'm gonna have to geez, take that off again. And then <clears throat> Right, that's that one. Ha, huh. okay. So let's get that pin back through again for the 19th time. Fight it, why don't you? Okay. So all those springs and retainers are now in place. Apart from this one, which is huge. I'll do that now. In fact, I think we'll do that one last. Let's get this adjuster in place now. Okay. just in place now that needs to go through there there we go and then onto that that's a big one okay 
Sorry, camera. If in doubt, give it a clout. Okay, so we've run out of bits. Whew. Everything's in place. That's on there, that's in there, that's in there. All the shoes are sat against the backing plate correctly. Okay, so the next job is to offer up the drum and to adjust the distance between those shoes. Now at the moment we've got plenty of clearance. So the adjustment is on that adjuster down here. So we're going to need a flat screwdriver to click that round. And as I'm, put, as I'm adjusting this, you'll be able to see the gap here will increase. This is exactly what happens when that arm there, look, clicks down. It pushes that wheel around. So that's how the auto adjuster actually works. Okay, it's important we don't overcook it because it's a bit of a pain to back them off again. Still a bit of clearance. Want it pretty close, but not not rubbing. That's pretty important. further yet. Not much, a couple of clicks maybe. There we go, let's try that. Okay, so before we can do the final adjustment on these shoes inside the drum, uh, and the adjustment's done by that wheel that we saw down the bottom, there's an access port on the backing plate. We can remove a couple of rubber grommets, and we can get in there and adjust the shoes out until they're touching the drum, and just starting to bind, and then back them off a little bit to give them some clearance. But before we do that, we really it's absolutely imperative that we put these screws back in again. Otherwise, the drum won't be in the correct position, and it'll give you a false reading. Line those in. There we go. Yeah, it sounds like there's a spring catching. Let's take that off and have a look. See if I've got a spring the wrong way around or something maybe not where it should be. Don't want it squeaking down the road. Okay. So what have we got? Ah, what's this? There's something in there. Bit of an old spring look. Very strange. Okay. That's a bit bent too, there, look. Where that flange is. Let's give it a little tweak. And there, look. Okay, let's try again. Fixed. So screws in. One. Two. There we go. Now remember we've got to give those a tap round with a centre punch and then lock them off. Okay, so. 
One, two, and then give them a center punch between the screw head and the actual drum itself. There we go. One, two, and that just stops them coming undone. Right, time for a final adjustment. Okay, so you can see here, it's very, very awkward with the camera, but anyway, through this little square hole, we can see that uh, adjustment wheel on the inside, the ratchet wheel. And to increase um, the distance between the shoe and the drum, we would move that ratchet wheel downwards uh, on this side. And to decrease the distance between the shoes and the drum, we'd move that ratchet wheel upwards. Now, uh, I have just adjusted this one up. Uh, it's almost impossible to keep the camera focused uh, and give you access to seeing that wheel being adjusted. But I've just used a small flat screwdriver, pretty easy to do. Uh, and it's important that you get, basically you, you adjust it so that the, the shoes start to bind on the drum and then back it off a couple of clicks. You do need to have a clearance between the shoe and the drum, otherwise uh, things will start to bind up as things warm up and your brakes will bind on. Right, all that's left to do now is to bleed up. Ford Courier. Okay, uh, my apologies, that wasn't the best inst uh, reinstallation of brake shoes and springs and bits and pieces. But I've pretty much forgotten where everything went and I was working it out as I went, I went along. Um, but it's all done now, it's all back together. New wheel cylinder and correctly adjusted brake shoes. And um, no half broken spring trapped between the drum and the backing plate, which is what we found a bit earlier on, causing that squeaking noise when I was adjusting it up. Um, if you have any questions or comments, then please do leave them below. If you found this video helpful, and my apologies for the sound quality, it was a bit windy today and I had to do it outside. If you found it helpful, then why not subscribe to the channel? That way you'll get some notifications come through whenever there's new videos going up there. Um, what else? Well, thank you very much for watching. Cheers, over and out.